Hello and welcome to Hop Along Studio. In today's video, I want to share with you how to make this fun shaker Christmas card. This one's using mixed media elements. We'll be using embossing glazes, uh, some watercolor mediums, in this case I'm using brushos, just to add a little bit more dimension and interest to this Christmas card. So let's get started. So before we get started, I want to talk about a few of the mediums I'll be using today in this mixed media card. As it's going to be a shaker card, one of the first things you want is something to put in your shaker. I have all of these sequins and fun little collections of sequins from Wall Whisper Designs, but you can use pretty much anything you can find on hand that is small and will fit into a shaker card. I'm also using a variety of the Bobbles and Bows cardstock from Wall Whisper Designs. I have this late blue cardstock. I have these word cardstocks I'm going to actually use as a sediment and also have this snowflake cardstock. If you don't want to use these particular mediums, I would say either find some paper or even just stamp your own paper design using stamps or something else or even draw it if that's what you would prefer to do. It just basically you need something to kind of add a little bit of texture and interest to this card. I'm also using some Staples cardstock as well as a piece of acetate and this is going to be the front of our shaker card. I'm also going to be using a few paint brushes along with embossing ink. You can also use just an embossing ink pad for this depending on what you have on hand. I'm also using this Distress Embossing Glaze. The Weathered Wood is the color I am using today as well as I have Cobalt Blue and Sea Green Brushos for this project. For this step you want some sort of water reactive medium whether or not that is Distress Stains, Distress Ink, Watercolors, uh, watercolor crayons. There's a lot of things you could use for this step, but in this case I'm using brushos today. So the first thing I want to do is create our little window on our card. And I usually use my brother's scan and cut, but today I'm going to be using these circular dies. They're really nice for just creating a nice circular shape and you don't have to worry about trying to line it up perfectly. You basically can just look at it, make sure it's pretty even, and just run it through your die cutting machine. When you're adding this circle to your background, I just flip the paper up uh, backwards, because what I want to do is, I want to create a circle, but I want to make sure it's nice and even on each of the sides. So I'm basically taking my ruler and just making sure that this is lining up quite nicely, and it's fairly even. It doesn't have to be perfect, I usually just eyeball it as closely as possible and then just add some washi tape. And the reason I'm doing this on the back of the card is just in case the washi tape holds on a bit too much, then at least this way it's not going to rip the front of my card. So I find washi tape is usually pretty gentle on these surfaces, but I've run into enough situations where I've ended up with ripping and results that I haven't been happy with that I'm not willing to take the chance of ruining the front of my card. So basically I just took this card and I ran it through my die cut machine. You can see you got this really beautiful circle. If you're not using dies or you don't have a brother scan and cut, what I would suggest is basically just um, flip over your card, figure out a circle on the back and just use a knife or something just to cut it out. The other thing is if you're finding that you may not want to do a circle, you could also do a square. You could really do any shape that you want for these shaker cards and that maybe will be a little bit more easy if you're not using dies for making just a nice perfect style shape because a square is a lot easier to cut than a circle when you're doing your freehand. Before I start this card, I should have mentioned I'm using a four by three quarters by six and three quarter card back. The reason for that is I actually have a five by seven piece of paper uh, that I want to frame this on. And then that way this is gonna work just perfectly and having a nice little frame around my card. So I wanna start by adding a little bit of color and dimension to my snowflakes. So I want to actually emboss these snowflakes and I'm gonna be using the Distress Embossing Glaze and this Emboss It Dabber. I'm gonna be using a paintbrush and I'm going to take a little bit from inside of the container and just start painting in the embossing powder onto my shapes. And then this way the snowflakes end up with a lot of embossing powder on them which will help really help with the step to make sure that you end up getting a really good finish. And one thing I forgot to do before I started, and we're just going to have to go around the snowflake to make sure I don't touch it, is because this particular paper is quite slippery, it sometimes ends up, all the embossing powder ends up clinging to it. So by doing this, this is just going to prevent it from clinging to it and instead just stick to the surfaces I want it to. 
like the snowflakes. And you can use an embossing pen for this step, but what I found was because of this paper, as much as it's very smooth and glossy, it was sucking up a lot of the embossing ink, and what I was finding, I wasn't getting a really great result with my embossing, which is why I'm adding, using a paintbrush and adding it a little bit thicker than I normally would. And this as well too allows you to work and put in quite a few snowflakes before you have to emboss because you don't have to worry about it drying out right away. And I know a brush is, it takes a little bit of practice. So if a brush doesn't work for you, just use a pen. And other options, you don't have to use embossing powder for this. You could completely use just markers or gel pens or something else. What I like about the embossing powder, because the embossing powder is translucent, what's nice about it is you don't lose all of the details you have on the snowflakes when you're trying to add your embossing powder. And so you get of some dimension, you get some color, and you don't lose all of your details. Because again, another option is you could add glossy accents to these, you could add markers, but this is probably my favorite way of doing this. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll notice that once I actually get this all done and I add embossing powder to it, you're going to run into having areas that don't have perfect coverage, and that is totally fine. And I don't want this to dry out too quickly, so what I'm going to do is just use a scrap piece of paper and then I'm going to add half of the embossing powder onto the card. I've done half the card, so then I'm going to add embossing powder to half the card, and I'm going to emboss them, and then I'm going to do the other half of the card as well. So you can see in certain areas, I ended up having embossing powder stick to the paper, and that's when you want to just take a little brush like this and just try to get rid of all those extra little specks. And that's part of the reason I like trying to use a little pouch here because it just helps it not stick where you don't want it to stick. It helps it only stick to the areas of embossing powder. And there's always going to be a little bit on the surface, but the idea is to try to get as much of it gone as possible and just in the areas that you want it to be. And you can see in some of these areas I didn't get all of the tips and that's totally fine too. It's it doesn't have to be perfect for this technique. And I'm just gonna take a minute to emboss these images. And if you want to learn a little bit more about embossing, I do have another video that I have in the card that you can reference that if you wanna learn how to emboss images. So you can see that by melting the powder, now you get a little bit of gloss and shine to the surface. Uh, it makes a really nice finish on this. And so what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead and do the rest of the card, and then I will just meet you back on the next step. So once you add your embossing powder and heat set it, it's good to check it just to make sure that everything is fully heat set. The other thing you'll notice is now we have a nice shiny surface to this, which makes the perfect resist to watercolor mediums. And that's part of the reason I chose to just do the embossing over doing a different way of coloring in these snowflakes. And so today I'm gonna to be using some cobalt blue and some sea green brushos. In this case, I'm just trying to make a mix of watercolor color with this. So I'm just adding a few dabs onto my surface. And now what I'm going to do is add some water. So I'm just using some just water out of a sprayer. And it can be a pretty intense color. So I am adding a lot of water just so that it isn't too bright on this card. And I'm just dabbing in. I want it even a little bit lighter than that. You can see just by doing this, you're getting a lot of really interesting color onto your surface. This is quite a wet technique, so you're gonna have to let this dry a little bit. And you can see in some areas, it's not going in between the snowflakes and other areas it is. And just dab it in until you kind of get that final result that you're looking for. And what's nice about this particular pattern paper is it is quite strong so you can kind of get away with having this much color and this much wet on it and it will still dry quite nicely. So that was a little bit brighter than I had planned to go for but I still really like it. I like just how the snowflakes stand up against the background color. And actually now that I'm looking at my piece here you'll notice that some areas of the snowflakes have a little bit of brushos on the surface there. You just want to take your bit of paper towel and just dab off the brushos that are resisting the surface. 
And this is where if you're not doing a perfect job embossing, it doesn't really matter because by the time it fits into the crevices, you don't see a lot of white space except for areas that maybe you want a little bit lighter. So I'm just going to clean up these snowflakes. And then I'm going to set this aside to dry. And while that is drying, the next thing we want to think about is the size of our circle and how we want to create our little window. And so our window is really a three inch circle. So what I've done is I've cut acetate to three and a half by three and a half inches. I've cut a back piece to three and a half by three and a half inches. And the reason I chose this piece is it works quite well with the colors in the snowflakes. Then the other thing you need to think about is what color of sequins or shaker elements you want to add into the center. I'm going to stick with some of the blues and I like the little stars in there because it looks a little bit like the snowflakes to me. I might add a few of these green guys and a few of these blue ones in here as well. But part of my shaker card is I do want to have a sediment or something in the center here. So this is where I'm going to take one of these sediments here. In this case, they're all fairly long, but I'm going to use the joy one because it's going to fit into that three inch by three inch circle fairly well. So I'm going to take a few minutes and fussy cut this out while this is drying. The other thing to think about is where it's going to fall in your circle. And in this case, this is where I'm using the little die cut shape just to help me figure out generally where it would be centered. And in this case, I kind of want to have the joy a little bit higher up on the card because part of it is I want the shaker elements to kind of fall in below here. And so I've done a few shaker cards over the years and sometimes I would have the sediment too low and all of a sudden you realize you can't read the sediment because you have too many shaker elements in it. The idea is you should be able to read it even with the shaker elements in there. And so I'm going to be using a glue to attach this to my back here. The reason I use glue is if you use glue dots, what will happen is it will be slightly above the surface and then some of the sequins and other things will fall in behind and that's not going to make quite as good of a result. And so I'm just going to add a little bit of my glue to the surface here. And if you have put on a lot of it like I did there, just take your finger and just spread it. A little bit of this stuff goes a long way. This um, Glitter Art Glue has been one of my new favorites. I've discovered this quite recently and it uh, has good adhesion. It puts things in place quite quickly. So it's a really good product to use when you're trying to do cards like this. I'm just going to pull this guy out of the way. And that just kind of gives me an idea with placement. So when you're letting your card dry, it's better to let it air dry over heat setting it. Because I find with the heat setting, you get a lot more buckle in it than you do when you just let it sit to dry. Uh, the reason why this buckles a little bit more than other paper is it's not watercolor paper. It's a heavier cardstock, which is great because it will take water. At the same time, it won't take color as well as watercolor cardstock. The next thing to do is now create the window on your card. And so we've talked about the acetate and talked about creating our embellishment. So now we want to attach this to the back of the card. And so you can see I've done it so it's a little bit bigger than the card back. And now what you want to do is take your double-sided adhesive and attach to the back of the card. Just going to make sure. Okay, so when I did this, I should have maybe done this a little bit differently. So when you're adding your adhesive, it's better to actually add it just around the edge of your circle. You could add it to the edge of your acetate, but the problem is you don't want to have any of it overlap the window. You want to center this as well as much as possible. You can see I had actually put a little strip of adhesive and then I realized that I wouldn't be able to center my window if I did that way, which is part of the reason why I moved to moving it just along the edges. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer to center you can get, the better it's going to look. So if you ran into what I ended up doing, which is I submitted adhesive had come past the window and was causing a little bit of sticky residue. This is where this product called Undo. It basically removes any self-sticking adhesive. So any places where you might have adhesive that sticks that will not come off, a little bit of this, rubbing it with a paper towel and you will get it off. So it's something to think about when you make those mistakes, they're not undoable. You just need to find the right product to fix it. So before you add any of your shaker elements, you wanna figure out where you wanna add your sediment. In this case, I wanna add it higher up so that the shaker elements can kind of fall below there. And I don't mind it having the J being a little bit more 
focus on than the tail of the Y. And what you want to do is you want to flip it over because it's important that you understand where your edges are for this. And in this case, I'm just marking my edges so I know exactly where to put it back down again. And to create a shaker card that has really nice shaker elements to it, you want to use a foam adhesive just to give it a little bit of lift. You can use any foam adhesive. In this case, I'm using these little foam pieces that I have left from other shaker cards that I've done. And I'm doing this a little bit differently. I'm just going around the circle. You can also follow the shape of the square, but one thing to realize is if you follow the shape of the square, you're going to have a lot of shaker elements that are going to fall all to all those corners. So you're going to need to add more shaker elements to make that work. And what you want here is to make sure you have a really good seal because you don't want any of your shaker elements to fall out. So you want to make sure that everything is really butted up tightly to each other. And I'm going a little bit outside the circle just so that you don't see it on the card when you flip it over. Now I very carefully line up my adhesive and make sure I have a nice strong edge to it like that. Before you take any of the adhesive off the back, you want to fill in your shaker area. And with the shaker area, I want to use some of these really fun stars and little discs and everything. So I really like the look of them. So you can just start by just shaking some of it into your card. You can decide how full you want it. Do you want some larger pieces? Do you want to stick with mostly small ones? The choice is really yours. I want to do three large pieces because I love having larger pieces in groups of threes. And then again, these little stars have found their way outside. And this is part of the reason why you don't want to pull the adhesive off <laughs> until the very last minute. Otherwise, you're going to end up with some really funky stuff going on. I think I want to add a few of these guys because there's just enough teal and other colors in there that I think it'd be kind of fun just to add a little bit of these kind of random squares. Not a lot of them because I do want the other one to be a little bit more of the focus on this project. And Wall Whisper has a lot of these different sequins available on their store. Let me pull that black one out. And uh, if you're interested in any of the sequins, you can just use my discount code, DTNADINA checkout, and that will give you 10% off of your order for any of these Wall Whisper Designs products that I'm using today. All right, and now I'm gonna add just a little bit more. It's gonna be a lot of sequins, but that is totally fine because I like having lots of them in the shaker cards. And I'm going to, because I already have some yellow and some blue going on, I'm gonna focus on using the blue and yellow ones as well. I'm going to stay away from the purple. And this is the thing, you don't necessarily have to use just the mix that you're giving. You can pull out certain elements and use them. And I'll add some silver guys as well. But I definitely want to focus more on the yellow and blue for this project. Just to match the card a little bit better. And one thing to think about when you're doing this is look at where you might end up having all of your things fall. So when you think about where the joy is, the joy will be partially covered by these guys, but that's kind of half the fun. I've maybe put a few too many in there, but we're gonna give it a try, see kind of how it looks. And then this gives you an idea of where you can kind of adjust from here. You don't have to do it exactly the way I do it. You can do way more, you can do way less. You can have things basically completely full of sequins. You can have ones that basically have almost none. Really, the choice is yours depending on how you want to use these products. And now what I'm going to do is just pull everything to the center because I don't want anything getting caught underneath the adhesive. And now I'm just pulling the adhesive backing off. And that corner was raising a little bit. So you want to make sure that as much as this is on a little bit of a curve, that it's very flat. And now I want to line this up the way I had planned originally. Make sure you give that a really good press. 
there you go. So now you can see that you have all that fun shakery stuff going on and you also can still see the joy. So to finish off this card, so now you're, or it's already a little bit dimensional here. So now you want to add more foam dimensional dots on the back just so it's raised up just as much. And then you want to add it to your five by seven card back. And so the reason I wanted to share a card with you today is again, it's we're getting close to Christmas and I love doing these types of cards uh, for, to give away for Christmas. I kind of try to vary things. I like doing alcohol ink cards. I enjoy a lot of the uh, more craftsy type cards as well. I don't really feel like you need to choose only one style to do as part of your creative practice during the season. I just really feel like card making has become part of my tradition for Christmas. Uh, there's lots of things we can do with our time during Christmas, baking and visiting with people. And I find that for me, cards are one of the things that I like to do. Uh, most people don't do cards anymore and very rarely do you get a card mail to your house for Christmas. And so I think it's so nice when you do these personal cards and some of the people who really will appreciate them. And I find for me, it's just a little way that I can just encourage and bless others. And so I usually have a lot of cards that I like to send throughout the year, but I find Christmas, I definitely focus and definitely send more than I usually do throughout most of the rest of the year. I just take those backings off. And then you just wanna make sure that you stick that in on your card back, nice and centered. So now I've added this onto that black background. Now we have a nice little frame. It matches with that black there and the black on the card. So it's one thing to think about. You could go for white, but I didn't really want to just focus on using white. I wanted to focus on using a lot of those black details and pulling them out, which is why I chose that black piece of paper. And this could be added onto a card back to just give us a card. You could also do a different version of this and use it in a scrapbooking page or an art journaling layout. There's no reason you can't make this into a different type of artistic piece. So I hope you've enjoyed this project and learned new ways to add these fun little shaker elements to your mixed media projects. And if you've enjoyed this video, if you could like it, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your support and for those who follow me every week, it means so much to me that you take the time to watch these videos. And I just wanna say thank you so much. And for those who haven't followed, just please subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. You can also leave a comment below. I love hearing your comments. I would love to answer any questions that you might have on these projects. You can also visit my website hopalongstudio.com. There I have other ideas on how to have a creative habit in your own life as well as other project ideas. There I also include the photo and the written instructions for each of my videos and you can find the supply list there. You can also find it below in the video description as well as some of the other videos that I've referenced about how to use brushos and embossing in your projects. And those videos go into a little bit more detail about those techniques. I hope that you have a really great week, that you take time for some creative self-care, and I will see you next time.